officially started. So, um, if you would like to introduce yourselves, please, Jo, introduce yourself. I'm Jo. I'm from Essex, and I'm a mum of two. I've got an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. Both of them are shits. Ooh. And what is your living situation, if you don't mind telling the audience, please? Are you I co-parenting? Live... Are you single parenting? What are you doing? Um, I'm single parenting, but my partner comes and stays over sporadically. I can't live with him because I'd murder him. So you're fucking <laughs> in. <laughs> and I've got the best of both worlds because you're he comes and stays over that. in the week sometimes, <laughs> but then he still has the kids of a weekend. So I'm like, sounds <laughs> amazing. I'm saying these terms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so he, he's got his place. He has the kids at the weekend. And my mum also has them in the week sometimes. So they're not here now. They've said it at my mum's tonight. I'm like, all right then. So you're just oh, like oh, a bad one parent, love. I'm, I'm just like Christy. <laughs> Erin, introduce yourself. Oh my God. I feel like I'm going to take me out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Erin, two children, one is five, one is seven, boy and a girl. Uh, the seven-year-old is an angel, the five-year-old, we won't discuss that. Second-born. Second-born child syndrome, yeah. very real in this house. It is indeed. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing, there's a whole thing about this, isn't it? Can you call yourself a single parent if they see their dad or they see the other partner or... So, yeah, yes. I don't know. Yes, I'm guess, Yeah. Yes. I'm guessing single parent, but co-parent very well as well. So yeah, single yep. parent yep. on the weekend. <laughs> single parent all yeah. all week. <laughs> <laughs> Just single on the weekend. <laughs> right, and I'm KD. I have two kids. So I uh, one is an asshole. Two are assholes. <laughs> one's four. One's twenty months. I'm going through the toddler stage. It's horrible, and I live with my other half. But it's like having another toddler. Oh. Right, so I, we are a little bit on schedule. The introductions have taken quite quick, so should we crack on with our first topic? Can I just say how impressed I am with your fucking schedule? Fucking I know. Up. Look, she's printed it out. I, I couldn't just keep hopping back. I'm not going to memorise it, like. It was I, amazing. Uh, I didn't even realise you were doing your dress fitting, doing all of this. When you said dress fitting, I was like, she's gone for a dress fitting as well as done all this. But when I she said dress, dress fitting, dress I thought fitting. she meant she'd done a dry run of this. I was like, my God, she's taking it really <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, I've gone and got an outfit made and everything. <laughs> Welcome to my show. <laughs> <laughs> no, Adam didn't tell me. Basically, his stepfather's mother is altering my dress and earlier he came home and he was like right you ready to go for your dress fitting and I went what and he went yeah Brenda's need you down there tonight now and I was like oh for fuck's sake that's why, was, that's why we're all having McDonald's for dinner I mean that's oh, the win so in itself to be fair I, I this is a Monday to Friday thing don't know why I'm acting like it's because of my dress fitting McDonald's <laughs> feeds my kids all the time thanks fuck for Ronald right Okay, 100%. so our first topic of the night is mother guilt. Yes, we're going That's deep. Me. The joys of mother guilt. Yep, all so, day, every day. All the time. All yeah. the time. What you do. I think the bedtime's the worst. That's when it gets me. After I've gone through the whole day and I'm laying in bed and I'm like, I've been so horrible today. I've got to do better. Like tomorrow, I need to do better. And then I do the same shit tomorrow. Yeah. No, and then you still shout, and then you're like, "Tomorrow will yeah. be better." And then just the kids are there, like, "Any day, any day, any day soon's all right to be better." It's always when you lay in bed at night and you go through over the day, and you're like, yeah. "I should have done this better. I should have played more. I should have done this." And then yeah. the next day comes, and I'm like, "I still ain't got no energy. I still yeah. can't do it." Or when you think of like. I always get it when I, I can't be bothered to leave the house because it just feels like an effort to leave. And then it'll yeah. come close to bedtime and I feel like, oh, do you know what? I've got this energy now to take them out. And then I'll put them to bed and I literally sit there and go, oh, my God, I couldn't be asked to even take them to the park. How shit am I? When that's not the truth, it's just like life has got like caught up with me that day. But I'll still yeah. beat myself. If I don't take them outdoors, I beat myself up about it all the time. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. But sometimes that's worse. Sometimes I'll ask my kids if they want to go park and they're just like, no, not today. And I'm like, thank God, <laughs> thank God for that. See, but then actually eldest, you keep him in like and it's that. worse. Logan's eight, so he's like that. He's like, no, I'm f-. he will sit on his PlayStation. Like, oh my God, my daughter's the exact same. Yeah. He will sit on his PlayStation all day, but with Hunter, I feel like I need. It's like a dog. I need yeah. to walk him. Yeah. They are. Where he's they're at. like puppies. They are. As well, and you, know, they need fresh yeah. air. Nobody yeah. gets this. That that I think, especially second-born children, especially if they're boys, they are like puppies. Yeah, you need, need to just to feed them at. and let them play and run. Yeah. Oh, at least you've got that. I've got a two-year-old. Well. A 20 odd month old girl and it's like she's having a bloody pmt constantly <laughs> yeah Honestly. that doesn't end by the way yeah no oh. my daughter's like she's like the nicest thing ever and then the second day she's got the biggest attitude she's throwing a strop i'm like i thought this came in a couple of years no yeah. but no it's from the same now with boys it's the same with boys logan is at the age now he gives me a look and he's stopping and he huffs and puffs at me and he tries to slam a door and i'm like Oh, who are you? <laughs> that age as well. Do you know, like with the hit in and stuff, because they're like exploring themselves and they yeah. like seeing what they can get away with and all that. And they like, yeah. like who now started doing the like digging the nails in, you know, the grabbing yeah. you and digging the nails in. And you know, yeah. you're having like one of those stressful days, and then they kick it off and you pick them up to like move them because they're going to hurt themselves. Then they do that, and then you're like, right then. And then they're like, <gasps> and then instantly the guilt. And I'm yeah. like, it was like attacking me two minutes ago. Yeah. Why are you I done that today. That was me today after school. My son kicked me in the back while I was driving because he was having a strop. And I sort of like swerved a little bit because it really caught me off guard. And when I pulled up, I absolutely lost it. Like, yeah. I was like, how dare you? Like, I'm your mum. Like, I've been at work all day. And like, I was just so, I was so upset that he could like literally full on boot me in the back. And he sits behind me and I lost it. And then he he started crying because I think it caught him off guard. Yeah. And then I started crying. I was like, I'm really sorry, but you just really hurt me. And I came upstairs and I was like, oh my God, like you need to get a grip. But it does, it hits you so like you have those jerk reactions sometimes when they yeah. do something and you can't help it, especially if it's just like you've got the that inner rage. Reaction. I've got that inner rage yeah. a lot of the time. And if, if it comes out, which it does, we're all human. Yeah. Um, it's hard because you feel so bad. Well, I get it. Like if he does, it's like especially when they're younger. So like when Logan was at this age, now Hunter's at this age. If he pulls my hair or rips out my earring, I have that split second of, <gasps> and then I have to stop myself. Because yeah. <laughs> immediate reaction if someone hurts you yeah, you've got yeah. to fight back and then you realize now you're a child you're a child oh, 100%. yeah <laughs> but i've even done that before like when i've my daughter sm- smacked me in the face once when she was like two and my jerk reaction smacked her hand away from me yeah. and i'm not a smacker that's just not me but she was like so shocked but i was so shocked but she yeah. full-on pelted me in the face and it was just like a straight but it was a like a like a good like yeah. smack on her hand away from yeah. me, and I sobbed for hours because I felt so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it is that I jerk I sort of like Logan. I remember when he was about two, two and a half. I was laying on the sofa. I think I was watching telly, and he was sitting on the floor. And I can't remember what he did, but he leant up, and I think he must have grabbed my hair or something. And I full on shoved him across. Oh my the god! Room. Yeah. And then I was just looked and I was like, oh my God, I just shoved you across the room. Yeah, a small child. But, it was that <laughs> of get off me and I you, but they're so strong. Yeah. So, um, they're like you, so strong. Find with like, so Joe, are you working at the moment? I've been signed off at the moment. And Erin, you're working? Yes. So what's the mum guilt side? Like I know when I was working, I would feel... Like, even though I was only working part-time, which was three days a week, I felt like oh, I wasn't being the best mum because I wasn't there 24-7. If that yeah. means I was like, guilt, I was getting all the time. Like, do yeah, you get it now? is. Well. Yeah, because my son hates going to school. He absolutely sobs going into school every single day. And now we're on summer holidays. They're at, like, the holiday camp um, yeah. while I'm at work. Yeah. I have to have childcare. Um, and every day he's like, I don't want to go. There's like I have to get him up, like, super yeah. early in the morning because it's, like, a two-hour battle every day to get him into school or wherever. Um, he just hates it. And, like, it kills me every day 
to send him in. And they, the school are like, oh, just leave him. Like, he's fine. And I'm like, I can't leave him. But he's fine. But, yeah, I do feel that. It's not even just that. You get him from work. And I try to get to, my kids to bed for seven, half seven yeah. every day. Um, summer holidays when I'm not working, it's whatever. But when I'm working, we have to be up early. Yeah. Um, and I, I just don't have enough time in the evenings to do, like, dinner, play, bath time, bedtime. Like, yeah. I've got an hour. Busy time, isn't it? Yeah, and they just want to play with me. And I'm like, I can't play. I just, my video yeah. yesterday. I was like, I can't play with you. Like, I've got to make dinner. I've got to clean up. I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you just feel so bad because they're just sat there and you, you've spent, you've not seen them in the morning. You've not seen them all day. You don't see them after work yeah. and then they go to bed. Yeah. And you do that four or five times a week. But then you don't work and everyone's like, oh, well, they're in school now. Why don't you need, like, you can go to work. Yeah. And it's just, um, you've got you that. You can't win either way. You can't win at all. You go to work, you're bad. You stay at home, you're bad. So you just got to do what's right for you. Mum guilt. This is weird. I get mum guilt. Because I don't feel guilty. Like, I guilt myself for not feeling guilty. Like, when I drop them nah. off at the nursery, I'm like, bye, bitch. And, run yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I, I feel bad. Because I'm like, I should be feeling sad. And then I feel guilty because I don't feel sad. Do you know what I mean? I'll I trick that. myself into still feeling guilty, even though I'm not guilty. I'm like, later, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, no, wait, I should be upset. This is the, you know, my offspring. I birthed that baby. But at the same time, be like, get away from me. You're doing murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so like happy to go to work. <laughs> or when they go and stay with their dad for the weekend, I should be like, oh, and I see people post that, oh, I can't wait for my baby to come home, miss my baby. And I'm like, oh, shit, I've only got an hour left. Fuck, yeah. I'll be home soon. <laughs> but I, I bet. Don't make myself feel bad. I bet, though, that's just giving face, though, on it? Because we've always been taught that, like, we are, like, a loving, nurturing people, like, like women and mothers now, you know, you've got to be full on loving, full on nurturing full on like just you are your kids and nothing else though when it comes to social media a lot of people portray that image even if that's not their the what's going on yeah. in their head like because most of us 100%. are not we want to get away from our kids as much yeah. as we can not just like i just hate my kids to get away but that then breaks you get in between of parenting because it's a 24 7 job to like recuperate and like you know realize who you are again because as women yeah. we all lose the person we were before kids. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, definitely, that's mum guilt again all the time. Yeah. It's, I, like know. I said, like, sometimes I know we can get mum guilt for telling them off. But again, I make myself feel guilty because I've done it before. I've told them off and they've cried. And I've walked away like, that's right, I'm the fucking boss. Yeah. And it's only been that night that I'm like, why didn't I feel bad for making them cry? And sometimes I just don't. Mm. Like, I'll tell them off and they will cry and I'll sit there and I'm like, yeah, that's right, now you fucking know. And I'll walk away. <laughs> They've got to know. And then that, that <laughs> night I'm laying there like, I'm a horrible parent. Yeah. No. You just can't win. It's You can't win because you make yourself feel bad no matter what. Yeah. All the time. And I can't yeah. think of what other situations I get mother guilt in. Oh, it's not the clubs. I can't, I just, I just, do you know, People and they got like all the after school clubs and stuff. Yeah, the gymnastics or no, whatever. nothing. I I I tried the dance thing with Geth and COVID happened, and the amount of ass like, it was to get two of them out of the house for one of them to go dance for forty five minutes. Yeah, when I do to sit because of COVID, and then yeah. I did five after it, and he da and and then I'm like, oh, but you know, I, for your future, I should start you in dance now so you can be Billy Elliot or something. I don't know. Like <laughs> But, and then I'm like, oh, but the effort for that one hour a week, flipping out, yeah. I will say bye. It's just so expensive as well. Like, here it's like £10 per lesson per child. Oh, wow. But like an hour's thing. Like, I, I know London is like madly expensive for everything, but like some of them, I'm just like, I'm not paying £10 for yeah. them to like run around a, a football pitch. Like, they can kick a football in the garden. I'll teach them football <laughs> <laughs> for free. <laughs> Well, I get like that with swimming. Like, when I see the cost of swimming lessons, I'm like, yeah. I could pay that or I could just take you to the fucking swimming pool and teach you how to swim. Like, I didn't yeah. take Logan to swimming lessons. I'm not taking Hunter to swimming lessons. But then I feel like I'm making them miss out. Cause I, like, yeah, I am going to do swimming lessons. Because yeah. I can't really swim. So when they're younger, that, oh, I remember yeah. when I used to do swimming lessons, I went in my pyjamas. Like, I didn't have any of that. But no, people I didn't. that I went to school with would all talk about going to swimming lessons. Mm. But I look at the price and I'm like, no, man, I'll teach yeah. you how to fucking swim. They teach them in school anyway. 
Are you allowed? Our school don't have I don't think box. they do it in mine anymore. No, they don't do it in one round either. No, they oh, stopped please. it. They did when I was in school, but yeah. not anymore. Then, like, you're five and you're six and there, so men, you learn swimming then. Yeah, no, no they no, don't I'm do it here anymore. I've only just gone into year four, so I'm not sure. I feel yeah, like Ava's only year three. It's a life skill, isn't it? Like how not it is. Not. It is. It's that, I think that's the only club I'm going to actually pay for. Like I can think that it's important because I do think it is important yeah. to learn how to swim yeah. more than anything. But I'm not. I don't think like and then, and as well, I've put Ava when she was little in so many classes, paid the money, and she'd go to like one or two, and she'd be like, I "Don't want to do this anymore." Yeah. But you've you've paid for like the month or something, and you're just like, "Oh my god, I've paid like sixty quid now for a class that you don't even want to do." They change their mind all the time. And then you get like the mum guilt then afterwards because of like all the things you said you weren't gonna do, or like you know the best interests, and then you get that guilt of like, uh, "I was gonna be this parent," and yeah, no. You See, yeah. a different game. It all went out the window for me because after yeah. I had Logan, I got postnatal depression. So all of my, yeah. you won't have a dummy, you won't be a bottle fed baby, all of this stuff went out the window because it was like, I just need to make sure you're fed and okay. I, yeah. I, I just need to do that, then yeah. I'm fine. So I didn't have any of that really. But when he started getting older, I remember he's not going to eat processed food. I used to lick the salt off of his McDonald's chips. Oh my God, I did that. <laughs> I used to do that. I used, used to, to ask them for fresh chips with no salt it. on it. Yeah. Whoa. Are we insane? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. No. Thank God. I was put on <laughs> Steve and Donald, put him in the high chair and get a chip, lick it, give it to him, lick it and give it to him. I swear. I used to pick the batter off of the fish fingers. Oh my God. I'm so glad it wasn't just me. I used to think, why do I even bring her in here? I don't want her to eat it. But then, yeah. like, after that, I was like, oh, whatever, she'll be fine. But yeah, I did used like, to ask for fresh chips like, with no salt. Whole bag of chips, mate. Here you go. I no, no, now, I'm like, have it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was I was all right with my first with Ava. I feel like I'd done pretty much everything I wanted to do. Um, the only thing I struggled with massively was breastfeeding. And that like killed me. Like I'm, so, I was so like I'm gonna breastfeed like 100. percent Like it's so natural and blah de blah. Like I'm not against bottle feeding. I bottle fed her until she was one, and same with Blake after a while. But I was like, I'm gonna do this for me, and yeah. I just couldn't do it. Like it just didn't work at all. Like I, I produced exactly no exactly. milk. Like I was the same as you, postnatal depression, but mine was completely undiagnosed. So I just got on with it, and I was like, Why do I feel so shit all the time? But I, I thought it was because I couldn't breastfeed, and yeah. I was so down like I can't even tell you how down it got me because yeah. where I lived was like a predominantly like breastfeeding place okay. so I would actually go out and like bottle feed Ava and people would be like and I'd be like I swear my boobs just don't work I really <laughs> did want to do it but they just don't work and it, it, like, it killed me I think that, <laughs> that went with my postnatal as well because where I was already feeling shit and then I couldn't breastfeed so he yeah. was always hungry because he was never getting enough because I wasn't producing enough yeah so he was like every hour half hour he weren't sleeping because he was always hungry so he was always yeah. on me so I felt like a human dummy after a while because yeah. he just I felt like that, that with Blake <laughs> he was, so he was, was exactly like, the same you know what, what with the cluster feeding on the boobs as well it can be tough because it's yeah. constant and you can't pass them to anyone else either. No. Like, there's loads of, loads of mums up there. And that's another thing, right, girls who are watching. Like, it's breastfeeding. It either works or it doesn't. It, there's nothing yeah. to do with 100%. you. 100%. It's the baby. Like, getting a tongue tie. It was really yeah. painful. You're going to meet mm. some women that go, oh, well, it's supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to hurt. Oh, it's no. meant to be uncomfortable. No. But it's not supposed to like be really painful. No, um, mine was horrific with Blake. Yeah. Like horrific. I was clenching my fists and everything. Because so I bad. think the mums get that, don't they? Where they think like, oh, this is something I should be able to do. You know, I've just yeah. given birth. I've just done that part yeah. of being a woman. And now I'm yeah. like you're failing because as a woman, you think yeah, I should exactly be able it. to do this. Yeah. yeah. You're like, the only reason I have boobs is to feed a baby and yeah. it's not working. <laughs> It like, makes you feel so bad. But then that's it's some it's just one of those things where also a lot of the care you get in the hospital, you don't get a, a lot of like breastfeeding after care either. They kind of like oh they've latched, okay, you're fine, and then they leave you. But you can and get it can be to do with your birth as well. Like if you have a traumatic birth, oh, yeah. or anything like that, like it can really affect your milk supply. Nobody tells you that. Mm -hmm. Nobody tells you if you have like a traumatic birth or like mine was super quick, but her cord was wrapped around her neck, so it was really traumatic. Her birth, but yeah. 
that I feel like that's the reason why I produced like no milk because my body was like in shock for like days after and those first like two three days are the most important with like the colostrum and all of that and it just didn't work so I think people don't realize if you have quite a traumatic birth even just mentally not even physically it really affects your milk supply so well, take that into account as well like if you're struggling mm-hmm. that it could be that as well Right, because yeah, Logan's birth was really traumatic, so I think that affected it. But with Hunter, his birth was so easy, and I've managed to breastfeed for like a week, and I thought I was doing really well, and it wasn't until I went to get him weighed for the first time that they told me that he'd lost a lot of weight, and that's when I realised, <sighs> look, I need to bottle feed. I'm fine yeah. with it. Do you know what I mean? With the second one, I'd already prepared. I bought bottles, bought formula, just in case I had to. Yeah. So he- when they said to me, look... He's not getting enough from breastfeeding. You need to bottle feed as well. I was like, Kushi, fine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. I'm yeah. going to ask as well, guys. So, obviously, what do you find is, like, your best way to cope with mother guilt? Like, what do you find helps you? What, you know, if you're having them days where you're feeling like the world's worst mum and, like, you're doing everything wrong and, you know, how we get into them pits sometimes, and then when you're overthinking, what would be your tips to people? <laughs> to like break it what what do you think of is alcohol um, an option yeah <laughs> get pissed get about it <laughs> get drunk and fall asleep <laughs> yeah uh, oh i don't really drink i just eat <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a drinker i'm an eater <laughs> I think talking about it helps me. Like I've got really good friends. Like my friends are absolutely amazing. So if I'm feeling really shitty, all I've got to do is message one of them and be like, "I've done this," and then they'll talk me out of it. And they'll be like, "Look, what are you doing about? They're alive. You're fine. They're yeah, living. You're fine." Yeah. Like reality bring back on. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? They're, I've done. I've covered the basics today, and that's all we need yeah. today. Because sometimes that's yeah. all people can manage as well, and you shouldn't beat yourself up for doing the basics. Exactly. You don't have to add like, I've kept them alive. I've fed them. They're partially clean. I'm winning. Like... Yeah. And I think, I think as well, you've got to realise, like, all these Pinterest mums, as you call them, yeah. they are not real. Like, they're so oh. few and far between. And I think it's so nice to have, like, like, I think TikTok has made me realise there are so many normal parents out yeah. there. And when you feel guilty and when you feel like you've done such a rubbish job, you actually realise those people that have their house spotless and they never shout at their kids and blah blah then they're, they're they're so like they're in the minority yeah. because it's just you're just a, you've got to remember you're a human and i think being a parent makes you realize why your parents shouted at you or why you got into trouble and you realize okay yeah i might have remembered to get into trouble or whatever else but you you don't realize why until you become a parent so i do try to remember that like i'm only human i've got my own problems I've got my own thoughts and my own issues and as long as you apologize I I think it's very important to apologize to your children and extremely important especially as I think we're a generation of of people who were never apologized to as children at all so I think it's really important if you've had a rubbish day to like let your pride down and say I'm sorry for shouting at you today or I'm sorry for what I did or I'm sorry for my outburst or whatever. And it, I think it makes your children like better rounded children and better rounded people because they can realise that you can apologise. Because that's a lot of, oh, like with children, it's like a respect thing as well, isn't it? Like with children. But I think if you treat them as people, then yeah. you have mutual respect for you both. And if you respect them, they'll respect you back, innit? Which a lot yeah. of our generation didn't have. It was like seen... You know, you should you should be seen and not heard. Like get in the call, yes. and shut up, all that kind of like. One hundred percent. Yeah. So I just try not to feel guilty about things that you like that aren't real. It's like when people like young girls look at Instagram and these Instagram models and they think, oh my God, I feel guilty because I don't look like that. They're not real. It's not, yeah. it's, you can, and I actually unfollowed every single Pinterest mom and account that made me feel bad about myself because it's not their, it's not, it's not other people's oh. duty to make you feel good about yourself. They're not doing it to make you feel bad, but it did make me feel bad. So I unfollowed them and now I don't have to see them. So I feel much better. <laughs> and now I follow people like us who are much better because. <laughs> Because they're just normal. <laughs> Watching Jo to say, you know, she turned up to any with a shit mum's club bag, and I'm like, yeah, they're my people. <laughs> Mate, it was, I was like, because it just come. I think it was the day that it just came. So I had my bag on, I had my <laughs> I was like, yeah, 
shit mum's club, let's go. And then he's covered in blood. And I'm turning to <laughs> your knee with him covered in blood. I'm going to shit mum's club. It's like, fucking hell. Like, it's a good thing they can still only let one parent in and he wanted daddy. I was like, I'm going to go sit back in the car. Yeah. So I did a live in See the ya. car and I was like, my God. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, that. Right. So... We had some questions sent in. So these are some questions off, I think it may have been one of my followers and one of Kelly's followers. Kelly will be a quarter to nine, a quarter to ten as well, okay? We just didn't realise that we could only have two people <laughs> on you. So if you've just tuned in, Kelly is coming. We haven't just kicked her out of the group, right? <laughs> the violin. She's fucking happy. You're right? a mean girl, right? you can't yeah. today. <laughs> Uh, right, so the first question was, and it was a bit bit of detail, but was how to get your partner to share the law. So basically talking about dads, I think more in the terms of living with the dad, whereas like you as a mum, you find yourself doing fucking everything, whether you work or not, whether it's the cleaning, the cooking, the looking after the kids, you know, yeah. uh, everything. Um, yeah. So what would your advice be i know it's a different circumstances but with like ryan and your ex-partner like how would you get them to share the lord like what's a good see i found when ryan was living here obviously he was working full-time i was working part-time but because i was working part-time it all fell on me i had to arrange the childcare. I had to drop the kids off to childcare, go to work, do the cleaning, get them from childcare and come home. So I sometimes still wouldn't get home until after he got home. But then because I worked part time, I was still cook and clean. And it's like, yeah. it was always down to me. And I found that really hard. But to be fair, I'm not one to hold my tongue. So I would literally sit there and be like, I've done this, 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 and this. Yeah. You've sat on your ass and driven the lorry all day. Fucking ran up. And then he would. So. He kind of had no choice. I just had to go at him if he didn't. Right. Where I was coming from when I when this question got like uh, sent to me was, what happens I find a lot is with boys, and it's like when boys grow up as well, they're not expected to grow up to be fathers in the way like yeah. girls are. Like you know, you get the kitchen, you get the prams, and blokes don't. And I think when blokes have a child with someone, they're excited to have a child. But then they've never been prepared in life for like what comes yeah. with the child. They've yeah. always just seen it as like the mommy. So yeah. I think it's important, like if you have a baby or you're having a baby with someone, is to sit down and like set your expectations for both of you to whether mm. it's like what the feeds are. Like don't just take on all the feeds yourself and sit yeah. there and go, right, at night time, you know, Monday to th Monday and Wednesday are your nights. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And get that like Obviously, it's going to work different to every partnership because of people's jobs and things like that. And blokes don't get the time off their mothers do, which I think is shit yeah. because the baby needs both parents. Yeah. Um, and I think that would be... you just got to communicate, and you really, and say, like... Yeah. Communication is the yeah. top thing because if you don't get it out, you're going to end up sitting there looking at them on the sofa being like, I hate the way you broom. Oh yeah, my god, you will absolutely end up hating them. Like, oh, 100%. That's what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you you will. And you'll, you'll absolutely, like, you'll begrudge everything that they do, everything that they say. Yeah. Like, it's just, you you will you will hate their guts. And nine times out of ten, you, you will not end up together because you yeah. just, like, you'd either live unhappily with somebody that you don't love anymore and that doesn't support you and whatever, or you stay because of the kids or whatever else and you're just unhappy. So I do think communication is definitely key, but I do also think that you shouldn't put up with... Um, if you're going to do it all on your own, sometimes it's better off to just be on your own. Yeah. At least then you don't have the added stress of doing it on your own but watching someone sitting there on the phone all day. Yeah. and all night but while you you're don't doing everything of waiting for someone to help you and they don't help you so you're which is so much more disappointing than yeah. not having anyone there to be honest do you know what i found i did right so before me and adam together i had guess and guess father's not involved at all it's for clear oh, what um the same with logan's dad so i like had guess completely single mum mm -hmm. on my own just me and guess and then i got with adam guess was like nine ten months old roughly around that bit and then when Adam moved in with me and we had Ru, I'd gone from my dynamic of, like, just... Because I never expected Adam to, like, 
no, as you start dating, you're not like, okay, you look after my kid, do you know what I mean? You kind yeah. of blend together. Um, and I went from a point of like just caring for Geth and me being the responsible parent to then sh having a baby with a person. Yeah. And it was like, I was just constantly taking over everything because that's yeah. all mm. you have to do. So like it was yeah. like nappies, feeding, clothes, everything I was doing to the point where I now had bad postnatal after all and I'd break down to Adam and I'd be like, I'm struggling doing it on my own. And he's like, let me do it then. Yeah. <laughs> I'd walk over and stop him and he was like you're doing yeah. my head and he'd be like go away oh <laughs> he's a good egg <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's another thing I think we get stuck of being mothers of like doing it being the martyr like yeah. and you know I think sometimes as well it's because we know we see it before they see it so yes. we do it straight yes. away oh. without giving yeah. them a chance to because I always complain that like I'm the one it's like those shoes are getting too tight. I need to get shoes, new shoes. Those school trousers are getting too short. That top's getting too small. So I'm always the one that's buying everything, making sure everything fits, getting the new shoe sizes. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm always the one that's doing it. But I think it's just because I see it before he does. Yeah. If I gave him the chance, he would be like, hang on a minute, your foot don't fit in this shoe no more. And he'd go buy shoes. That's but it. I'm the one that I see it before, before him. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I can't, I can't cope in because I'm like, I know, I, went, I need to know we got shoes. I, yeah. can't wait, I can't wait for you to decide they don't fit down and buy them on the same day because I want to yeah. try shoes. That's a random yeah. Mine would be barefoot for months if I relied on anyone else to buy <laughs> shoes. They'd have no shoes. Well, They'd have the I tops cut out of it. A while ago, about, I wait, like, he'd been looking after the kids all day and it wasn't until like eight o'clock at night he was like, oh, he ain't got nappies. So I had to go to multiple shops without a bra on. So I couldn't bother to put a bra on to go find yes. nappies. And your mother ends up buying them for you. <laughs> Because he'd just, like, been taking them out of the nappy bag, got down to the last one, not even thought, I'll fill up the nappy bag out of the drawer. I went to go do it. There's none in the drawer. I'm like, did you not notice all day? All yeah, day. and then you're fuming. Oh, I was so fuming. Then you're like, ah. I was so fuming. I was literally just had a baggy jumper on to hide my nips. And I was like, I'm not going to another shop. <laughs> right. And the other question I've got then, right, which I think is one for mums to be, which would be, what's one thing you wish people had told you before giving birth? Don't do it. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, no, take it back. You don't want this to Put them back in. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I think appreciate the baby stage. Because everyone's oh God, like yes. the newborn, like the five months under. I appreciate that. Everyone says it's boring because all they do is, is sleep, boring. poop, and cry. Oh, yeah. It's amazing because all they do is sleep, poop, and cry. And you put them down and they stay in the same place. They don't they move. Don't my friend's got a newborn baby and she's dreamy. I just, I hold her, like I visit her maybe like once a week yeah. and I just look at her and I'm like, this is what my life was like at yeah. one point. It was so quiet <laughs> and it was just like lovely and they couldn't speak and tell me they hate me and yeah. do everything else. <laughs> It was great. Yeah, my one of my best friends, her boys just hurt one. But like whenever I'd go see him, I'd be holding him and he'd just want to sit on your lap and everything was new. He'd be like, you could give him a spoon and he'd be like, oh, yeah. it's amazing. Now I have to try so hard to entertain them. Like, yeah. oh my God, they think everything is boring. Everything. I would say just thing I wish someone had told me, and it's, it's okay to complain. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. It's okay oh, to complain and it's okay to say you're not enjoying something. Like if you had, you know, enjoying picking clothes for your baby to say yeah. I hate picking up fits. That you know, yeah. stuff like that that you just may not enjoy about being a mother. Instead of trying to be like, Oh yeah, I love it all, it's all great, I love my new baby and everything's great, yeah, I'm doing fine when underneath you're like cracking. Yeah. Because yeah. your mental health at this point is so fragile because of all your hormones that you need to just get the support so like anyone yeah. who, like, who will listen to you complain and moan and whinge or whatever you could slag your baby off like do you know what i mean yeah. someone will just support you you need to get that person do you know what i mean yeah. don't yeah. be scared to sit and say i don't want to be around this little human right now yeah don't feel yeah, like you have five to say, i love them all i want them all the time if some like, because I remember I used to go around my friend's house and as soon as I got there, I'd be like, do you want to hold him? Do you want to hold him? Yeah. I weren't like, oh, I was like, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to yeah. hold him for a bit? Let me I was like sit. that with my second. Yeah. Just let me sit. I want to be able to hold a cup of tea with two hands. All right, here you go. 
Yes, one hundred percent. I think mine would be um, not to be afraid to tell people to piss off. Yeah, like, you're not com- you're not coming round. You're not visiting me. I've just had a baby. I'm bleeding. My nipples hurt. I don't want to be around anyone. And even if that's your own parents, in laws, family, friends. Like with my first, I was inundated with visitors, and I felt like shit. I had a third degree tear. Like I was like, I was just. I felt horrific. It was three days after Christmas. Like it, everyone was full of cold, coming around, touching my baby. It was horrific. Second time round, I had no visitors for like yeah. eight days. I refused. I was like, nobody is coming around. It's just me and Ava, and obviously their dad was there. And I was yeah. like, nobody's coming. And it was yeah. amazing. And I felt so happy and so proud of myself that. I told people like and I stood my ground yeah. and I was like I'm not having visitors like someone tried to visit me in the hospital when I had Ava and I was like are you insane they were like I'm just outside the hospital can I come in I was like no go away <laughs> people do and then those same people are all want to see the baby like two months later when you're looking for someone to look after them, bored of it. yeah they couldn't care less yeah. Yeah. Bored of it. Yeah. no so see, I think... when they're newborns yeah on the same thing about visiting people don't be scared to sit there and say, no, you come to me. Because yeah. when the, everyone's like, you've not brought the baby around to meet everyone yet. Well, why am I, I coming to you? I never went to anyone. No, I remember when, like, again, when Logan was first born. So I, was, I was 19 when I had Logan. So it was the fact of I felt like I had to go and take him to family and be like, look at my, new, look at my baby. And then with Hunter, I was like, no, if anyone wants to come and see him, yeah. you come to me. I'm not travelling nowhere. <clears throat> so... Complain, don't have visitors. Mine is it, don't listen to your mother, right? Your own mother has these weird opinions, right? She could be the nicest woman in the world, but she'll always just have this hierarchy complain thing with you. Yeah. Don't take her word as gospel. Yeah, ab- or it's always that. I've had four kids, all right? Yeah, you be prepared my to tell your mum no. Stand yeah. up to your parents. Yeah. yeah. Especially with your routines and stuff. If you put yeah. your kid at seven and they want the kid for the night, then the kid goes to bed at seven and it's like, I don't yeah. care if it's being spoiled yeah. or whatever. No. I think I parents contradicting you in front of your yeah. kids. Like, I've told my kids off in front of my mum or my dad and they'll be like, oh, but come on. I'm like, don't contradict me. 100%. I'm the parent. Like, yeah. they play on it as they get bigger. Yeah. Exactly, because if I'm loading off now, he'll be like, oh, but Granny, it's like, no, no, no. That's yeah. because they've contradicted me so many times telling them off in front of them. So they'll go find the other, the yeah. ground. Yeah. Yeah. Kids yeah, are kind of, they have mm. good the manipulation as well, not thick. They find yeah, the they easy. latch onto it, they know. 100%. Mind you that now. They're like, Nanny. I'm like, <laughs> don't call her. Or I just look at my mum and I go, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. She knows now. But it's like taking me eight years. <laughs> yeah. It took me ages. It took me absolutely ages with my mum and dad, especially again with Logan, because it was the first and I was a young mum and I was a single mum. So my parents were involved heavily with yeah. me bringing up Logan. So they kind of felt like they had more of a say than grandparents did, which in a way they did. I had postnatal depression. I was young. They helped me a lot. But it got to the point that when I was starting to regain that control of my mental health yeah. at the time and my life, I would try and set boundaries as mum, but then they would be like, oh, bless you. Yes. Yay. Yeah. All right, well, it's so lovely to speak with you all. It's good, isn't I'm going to watch the rest. And Erin, yeah. this was your first live. This was my yeah. first live. It was really scary. Yeah. And like, my cheeks are so hot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you yes, maybe I'll do a few more. You should. You're so good at it. Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to watch the rest. So... Thanks, guys, and I'll see you later. See you later. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Uh, is she going to come on? Hey. Yeah, she is. Hey. hey. How was Love Island? I haven't really watched it. I went on my live. <laughs> Someone said they seen you on, the, on your live on your own. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just chatting away on there. Just chatting away. Are and you I'll all right? Like my own club. <laughs> Hey, I said it's been going well. Yeah, oh, it's all right. They're all doing these weird little things. I don't know, it's all in the background. It's all very kissy and very snoggy. And like Love Island, then that's Love Island, yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god, it's all getting a bit touchy on there. Hi yeah. Fran, hi Chloe. I can see everybody on here. <laughs> right, so our Sorry. second topic of the evening. So we've covered mother mm. guilt. We've done our Q and A. We're going to be doing the second topic, and then we're going to be answering Q and A questions from in the chat. Okay, so get okay. ready, get your questions ready. Um, so the second topic tonight is believing in yourself. So talking about mental health and like how to encourage yourself more, um, dealing with anxiety around having children. So like, I know like a lot of us, when you have kids, you start getting fearful of things you were never fearful of before because mm. you're in charge of someone else's life, if that makes sense, mm. uh, which can cause a lot of um, anxiety. And they're basically building up each other and like making sure to be kind and trusting yourself and so on. So really like what what have you guys found that's helped you basically be in finding out what kind of mum you are and being confident in that if that makes sense um i mean with me i definitely i've always known that i wanted to be a mum i i swear to god since the moment i knew what a dolly was I, that was it i knew i wanted to be a mum i'm i'm an extremely maternal person um and then actually when it came along it was like it was just a different story entirely I I didn't expect it to be even the way that he entered the world you know it was like I was pregnant for nine months I wanted to give birth naturally as I spoke to you before Katie about it and you know go off on this breastfeeding journey and it all be very much plain sailing and it, it just wasn't it wasn't like that for me at all I had an emergency c-section for those that don't know I've got a two-year-old little boy and um yeah we had a an emergency c-section because George was breech and they never picked up on that from 36 weeks he was breech and they didn't pick up on it and then I gave birth to him at 80, uh, 30 eight weeks and um yeah so I, I was I was really upset by that I was really upset and I felt very guilty of the fact that I hadn't given birth to him naturally and all the rest of it oh my god there's a massive moth in here that's like the size of a freaking plane um anyway oh it's, you know when you know moths when they fly around they're really aggressive like they just don't know where they are that's yeah. what it's doing <laughs> Oh my god, he's so aggressive. Anyway, and then with the breastfeeding journey, again, I just thought it'd be boop, and then just carry on with with that, and that didn't happen either. And um, then George was a really good baby. He's a really good newborn. He slept through very well. He was like just a nice little boy. He was like didn't cry that much. He was quite easy going. And then Toddlerville hit. Yeah. And that's when I was like, I really found out what sort of parent I was. Like, I tried the shouting and I tried the, you know, getting him upset. And I tried the being this authoritative parent and it just didn't work for us at all. And then I found gentle parenting and that just like worked for us so much better. And I did loads of research on it. I worked my ass off to try and do this gentle parenting because I know it works for him. And... um that gave me a lot of confidence because I know it works for him. He's happy because it does work for him. And then that's kind of like how we, we found our, our journey. But at the start, it was so bad that I would be taking George out in the pram. And I thought everybody wanted to throw acid on him. Oh, that was genuine. That was a one. Yeah. I looked at people that were walking past. And I was like, could you, or could you not be somebody that would hurt him? Yeah. And it got to a point where I'd stand like between the pram and that person. If I thought that they were going to be that sort of person, it was so bad. Yes, the but anxiety is, but when you're a mother, that is like the thinking the worst all the time. You can't explain it. Yeah. And it's always, go, it's as if like you walk around all day and like, I know you're cooking something on the stove and your first yeah. thought is they're going to come up, grab That's it. That's going to come off. On the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no matter what it is, like Adam always says to me, he's like, you're always the worst case scenario all the time. And I'm like, do I it. don't know what it is. It's like a prepare for, like, the world ending constantly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, so, it's so consuming. It's awful. Yeah. It's so consuming. See, and... I never get it in the moment. I always get it afterwards. I can go through the day and nothing goes wrong. It's at night when they're asleep. I think, when I was walking, 
I wasn't holding his hand. What if someone could have took him? When yeah. I was cooking, what if he could have pulled it down? So I'm not anxious in the moment. I get like anxious after the event has happened because I run through what could have gone wrong. Right. And I, I, and I don't know why that is because mm. it didn't happen. But I get it with a lot of things, not just like with both of them. I'm like, oh, he was playing over there. But what if a car had come around the corner? But what if someone had taken him? But what if this? And I'll go through you things that could worry. have happened. Scares us mm. because it's well, yeah. when I was a kid and it was Madeline McCann, so now yeah. oh, I'm the guy you're going to be the next Madeline McCann, like all the time. Yeah. I'm literally petrified constantly, yeah. but I'm but... never like it in the moment, I'm completely fine in the moment. I'm such a I say I can't do like gentle I'll be open. I feel like I that's just not for me. I am a shouty mum, I'm a I'll make you cry mum, I'm a I'll tell you off yeah. and shout, mm. and then. I'll get through the day fine, but then it's afterwards the anxiety hits me. It's afterwards the guilt hits me. It's afterwards I'm like, this could have gone wrong. Yeah. Like I was one of their mums where if he's throwing a tantrum, I'd be like, all right, bye. You come in, and he'd be like, no, I'd be like, bye. And I'd hide around a corner and be like, he's yeah. gonna cry in a minute and run after me. Do you know what I mean? That whole yeah. wait they don't see you, and it'd always work. But then I'd have that thing in my head of, what if when I walked away, someone had taken he it? He did it, yeah. yeah what yeah. if he'd run in the opposite direction? Yeah. And I'd start feeling sick and not be able to sleep about something that hasn't happened because it didn't happen but it could have done and mm, then yeah. it would just play on my mind yeah it's horrible yeah. it's um that it's a big but it's a big life change as well especially if you weren't that way before after having a child yeah. becoming that way it yeah. feels like you've adopted like this new personality that was never your personality as well yeah. which can be confusing yeah. um yeah. But yeah, that I think that links in with being a mother, though, and I. This is. Yeah. I think when I mean when 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 I like when I became a mum, I, I I had anxiety, probably from the age of twelve, thirteen, and then it subsided. And my twenties, like I had nothing. I had no anxiety whatsoever, no panic attacks. I'd gone years without having a panic attack or anything like that. And then it was exactly as you rightly say, Katie. It's like at the moment that that child is born, it's. It's maternal, isn't it? It's this animalistic, like animal instinct where you have to protect this child and you don't just protect them physically, you protect them with like your mind as well. And you're thinking like, what if, what if? Yeah, yeah. any danger, you know, like um, a driving test, like the yeah. way you've got to look as to what's coming. Yeah, That's what it's like as a mom. Potential dangers <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, it is. It's like my eyes yeah. are in the car. <laughs> move that handle, move that handle, yeah. like a saucepan or whatever. You've got to well, move I'll look back at pictures. And we've got so some good. lovely pictures. We've got lovely pictures standing on a bridge or standing like on a cliff with the sea behind us. Beautiful pictures. But I'll look at it and I'll be like, what if, we'd, what if he'd step backwards? Yeah. What if I'd yeah. let go of his hand? What yeah. if he'd have fallen? He didn't. This was like two years ago. Why am I panicking <laughs> about it now? Like, oh, yeah. it's crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely it's crazy. Just out of nowhere. But I think whole... actors, um, we don't give ourselves enough credit for like what we go through either. Like the entire change, and like a lot of us get in that stump of like, oh well, you wanted kids, so this is what you dealt with. This yeah. is what it was like yeah. having kids. But I think the like hormonal, how hormonal change that goes through women, and obviously the effects afterwards of being responsible for a baby and whatever your circumstances are, raising that child as well, it does have a lot of effects and we need to start giving ourselves a pat on the back and go we are doing amazing and yeah. you know stop looking at the negatives and start looking for the positives even if it's something yeah. really small like it's oh, the thing like how how many times you know especially mums that do deal with mum guilt like all through the day how many times do you actually look back on that day and go oh do you remember that 15 minute yeah. period where we played together and they loved it do you yeah. remember that that really good meal that you made from where you made them like avocado on toast or whatever you know like do you yeah. remember those times like you took them to the park but you didn't really want to take them to the park you did that you for did. them you don't yeah. remember that no all yeah, you remember you is the don't... times you didn't do it that's all yeah. you remember that's it like, yeah exactly you giving ourselves credit and what like yeah. what i like about the ship mums club is like is a lot of mums encouraging other mums, whereas before we yeah. all get told to be pitted against each other. Like, yeah. I could be all like a Kelly and a gentle parent, and what a wuss. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I like, because yeah. I'm not doing it, then I've yeah. got to be against what you're doing. Yeah. Where I think yeah. it's important that no matter how we are all raised now, children, if like yeah. you could smack and I don't like smacking, but then I can't yeah. just 
hate you and be horrible to you because yeah. you do that. Yeah. Like we yeah. need to start focusing on not how the person is parenting, but the actual parent and big enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Like we could all we, do yeah I mean with with gentle parenting like I I was really surprised when I came out with the fact that that's how I wanted to parent and not necessarily how I always thought you know I didn't you know get pregnant and think I'm always going to jet like gentle parent I didn't think that way like this is what works for us and that's what works for George like he's a very emotionally led child so that's what I know works for him and if it works for us like sound yeah but, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not sat here thinking like, oh, you know, like very hippie-fied and I don't discipline him. I discipline him, but I do it well with his emotions in mind, you know what I mean? And I had no idea when I came out with that parenting style how much, I don't want to say the word hate, but like how much of a kind of like turned up nose I would get from having that parenting style, you know, like. Oh, so you don't shower at them at all, or you know, oh, then they're going to grow up to be wusses, and they're going to grow up to be this, that, and it's not ready for the real world. Like, but then you... on the flip side, I feel like when I openly say I shout at my kids, yeah. I do smack yeah. my kids. If they're naughty, I'll smack them on the bum. I'll smack yeah. their hand. I'll shout at them. They will cry. I, if I openly say that, I get told I'm mean. I get told I'm abusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no matter what no you do, right, you're going to get yeah, someone to no you right you way. Wrong. Yeah, no right way of doing it. Nothing you there. can do that's right. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the yeah. point. Where it's like I always say, I don't care how you parent, and like I don't yeah. give a shit how you raise no. your kids in your house. It's not my house. Yeah. It doesn't affect my yeah. day to day, but you know, it doesn't stop us all building each other up. Yeah, and even if exactly. like, oh, how's the gentle parenting going? And you're like, oh, it's doing it. great. Not yeah. oh, I smacked my kid ten times today, and that was great. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because there is every kid's yeah. different as well. And you can't, exactly. like, even when you've got multiple children, you know that they react differently to different things. Yeah. So you yeah. can't expect everyone to parent the same way either. I, but, I also think, like, with the fact of, like, with lockdown and, and with, it, like, baby classes being removed from us yeah. and us being very much secluded from every other mum. And, you know, you've you've got friends, obviously, you've got lots of friends, but... Some of them might not have babies. They might not have babies the same age as yours. You might yeah. feel really lost in this this world of motherhood. And I think that now, like certainly having this platform and being able to like portray the real life of what motherhood is like is so lovely. And it's nice to be able to like, I don't, like you say, I don't care how you parent. I care about the fact that you need to know that everything you're feeling is normal. Yeah. And, you know, th there are, other mums 90% of the time that either have felt will feel or have felt it before that you know whatever whatever you're going through and that's why I really like the whole con like concept of the shit mums club I love the fact that like there's tiktok and mums yeah. just being real on there as well where there's other social media that begin with I think a lot more things with mums that need to be spoken about more openly like yeah. especially in regards to mental health I think there's yeah. a lot of stigma that mums are scared to say they have mental health because they think it's going to risk their chances of their kids. I've yeah, had mums message me. Having your kids yeah, because you. where I openly talk about my mental health, the amount of mums I've had message me saying they're scared to admit they've yeah. got mental health issues in case social get involved, in case people start saying they're unfit. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that really needs breaking yeah. down is mums being able to feel confident in admitting they're struggling. Yeah. I remember my I was have I had um some one of my friends, my very close friend, she had a baby and then I had George eight or nine months nine after months said, said when the when health the visitor health comes health. round, do not tell her how you're feeling. Yeah. Don't tell her that you're feeling down, don't tell her anything. And I was like, Okay, got it. Yeah. How bad is that? Yeah, That's you're scared to say it because you think they are going to judge you and it is going to affect you with your children. Yeah. Because I remember when I had Logan and I had my postnatal depression, I got to the point that I went up to A&E and I said that like I'm suffering with postnatal, I'm feeling really low. And they told me then that, well, he needs to stay with your mum and dad. You can't have him on your own. Mm. Wow. Wow. But then, then, then they preach, though. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And they say, 
if you have postnatal or if you were feeling sad or you were oh, feeling yeah, yeah. Yeah. but then like i had a letter for so i had postnatal depression i went through the doctor and i went through the um my occupational health and work and the perinatal services which was my health visitor referring me got in touch with me three months ago no not three months ago last month sorry i had the letter i and saw who, your video about that yeah who's 21 months old now they're yeah. off me there can you imagine yeah. if they hadn't had like i'm quite a like i was like i need help so i literally was shouting yeah. it to everyone i was like fucking help me i'm going insane like and i, yeah. I was getting to the point where i was like i'm gonna drive me and the kids off a bridge because yeah. like that's how i was Aww. feeling in my head and I literally broke down and said that. And I was like, I, and I said to my boss in work, and she was like, I'll bring occupational health and got me that help. Um, but people don't have that. And then that's when it gets dangerous yeah. for children. Is yeah, when if they're scared to talk about it and scared to get the help, it puts your family in a more dangerous situation. Yeah. If you're not getting the help for it and addressing how you're feeling, you're going to get worse. Mm. And we need mm. more funding because it's ridiculous that. And I know with like, look, the lockdown was happening and COVID and all that. I'm sorry, COVID was important, I get that. But m new mother, mothers who yeah. are raising the next generation of people, their mental health should have been number one priority. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. They to have their partners in there, even if they were the same household. Oh, it's disgusting. 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 But they're allowed to go to a football match. Yeah. They're allowed oh, to go oh, to a football match so or whatever. Yeah. What yeah. what the government done to mothers the last year should never have happened to any mother. Yeah. Like, and yeah. it's wrong. It's so wrong. Yeah. Well, my best friend was pregnant yeah. and gave birth during lockdown. So she went through her pregnancy. She didn't get to go shopping oh, with her mum. She didn't get to have her friends around to feel the bump. She didn't get to do any of the things you usually do. No. And then after baby was born, like, fair enough, her partner had two weeks off. But then she was just on her own indoors with a newborn baby. Yeah. Because she weren't allowed to go anywhere, weren't allowed to have people round. No. Like mentally, no. I can't imagine how that was. It must have been like being in jail. That's the only way you could yeah. think of it. You would have been felt so alone, a brand new circumstance, yeah. hormones everywhere, like health yeah. visitors on the phone call, things like that. Yeah. It's it's sick. But to not to not to not even be able to introduce this yeah. this baby to your like family, to your mum, to your dad, yeah. or like anybody, it's just like. I, I can't imagine it and I think as well like like following on from that even the the process of giving birth like especially as a first time mum terrifying oh, it's terrifying isn't it and to go through that alone and oh, oh only yeah. when you're at five centimeters or whatever yeah. the bloody rule was at the time then your partner can come in well, I've you. never heard such crock of shit in my life well, me and Ru so basically girls right I clearly knows this but I got given um the tea bag you know, in, in Dawson. And I went mm -hmm. in the bath on the ward, right? Because I was in agony. And they gave me one codeine at three o'clock in the afternoon, right? And come 10 o'clock at night, Adam was in the bathroom with me. I was in the bath and I was screaming. And I was going, the baby's coming, the baby's coming. Now, Adam had gone back and forth to get the midwife all this time. And she was coming in and going, you're fine, you're fine. You're not that far gone. Not checking or anything and just fobbing me off. To the point when I screamed at Adam, go get someone now. This baby's coming in the bath. He went and got them. She said, oh, no, you, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Nothing. Come out to the bath. And I said, no, I'm not getting out this bath. And to check my cervix, love, she did. And the woman went white, ran and got me gas and air, pulled a load of other people to come in because she was coming out to me. Yeah. So yeah. women like that in that circumstances who haven't got anyone when they get into that point to yeah. speak up and say, Hang on, because they do palm you off a lot when you're having a baby. Of oh, like, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Of women who are too scared to say, the baby's flipping coming out to me, and then how many partners miss that? Yeah. Because they haven't got that person who's their voice yeah. while they're going through pain yeah. and things. Well, not only that, all the scans. Like, going when you go for a scan, they always say you need someone there because at any point during a scan, you could receive bad news. Imagine yeah. going for a scan by yourself and getting bad news, and you don't have anyone there with you. No. Your yeah. first three-month scan, your five-month scan, any appointment during your pregnancy, they've always said before, you need to have someone with you in case you are receiving bad news, in case there is something wrong. 
imagine going through that all by yourself. So when you went through, it's, sorry, am I right in thinking then that all the midwifery appointments you had to go to alone as yeah. well then? Yeah, yeah. Like my friend was not allowed time. to take her partner with her to any of the scans or anything. Yeah. What? Yeah. This is the dads. The scans. I was literally the about to say that. that. I was literally about to say that. Like dads that. in the normal day and age, like they, Reese, for instance, like I'll, I'll say how it is. He really struggled to to bond with George, and I think a lot of dads do because yeah. it's all happening inside the yeah. mum, and she yeah. feels the baby and all the rest of it, blah, blah. And then when George was here, it was like, oh, you're like a little newborn lump that I'm supposed to love, and I just have no idea. Like he idolizes the boy now, but even in normal times, that that was really hard for Reese, and I just, I can't, I just yeah. can't even imagine. Like, I don't you know what, what makes it like. stupid is that. Ten, nine or ten times they're from the same fucking household yeah, yeah. they're all in the same well, household but they weren't allowed to go they yeah. both yeah. gone they? yeah 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 oh, right it's so we do so breakdown of that one anyway because we went into a bit of a uh, I know off track then with the lock, going. lockdown mums maybe next Probably week we can get some lockdown mums on here to have a chat and actually tell us about the experience of being a lockdown mum. That would be really mm. insightful and yeah. interesting. Um, but the basis of that topic, though, is it is important to speak out. Um, some things that people don't know, which I've come across with people messaging me, is if you have a social worker that does come to your house for any reason and they do give say something to you that could be ridiculous, where it's like, oh, you know, we're keeping your file open because your washing's on the floor or something... You can request another social worker. I think it sh this should be... People need to know this. You can ring and ask yeah. for another social worker. Same goes with your health visitor as well. You don't actually need to have a health visitor. Um, You can opt out to that service and it won't lead to you having social services involved. It is... You can opt out. Um, And also, if you are unhappy with your health visitor, you can ring up the GP and ask for a different health visitor, which I think a lot of women because if you're not sometimes you just don't gel with someone either exactly um, and you do need to be able to say how you feel because even though yeah. the support yeah. there isn't great there is still perinatal services you need um, you need to be able to have that relationship with someone where you're like almost ringing up your mum like yeah, oh my god having this problem like blah, blah 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 and going off about it whereas if you don't feel like if you feel immediately judged when that person comes in you're not going to bother, are you? Well, I think one thing I need to shout out about, and I can't stop bragging about, is when I was pregnant, because I had mental health in my first pregnancy, I was offered a service called Parents First when I was pregnant with Hunter. Right. It is a charity, and it is the best thing. You, It's like having a best friend. Yeah. It's a lady that will come to you once a week. Obviously, this is before COVID. She would come once a week for an hour, sit and have a cup of tea, and you can just rant with her about anything. She would come your whole way through your pregnancy, and like, three oh. months after baby was born and if you're by yourself and you don't have family <laughs> she would come to all of your doctor's appointments and the birth ah oh. yeah. it is one That's of the charity. best charities i have come across they what's that called me. again parents what's that called first. joe parents first parents first no. yeah Brilliant it was job. one of the best charities i've had the lady that i had her name was Chantel. And I kid you not, I invited her to the christening. I'm so lucky. She messaged me a couple of weeks ago on my Instagram to say, like, I found you on here. You're doing amazing. And I cried because she had oh, such oh. an influence on my life. And she even helped with Ryan because Ryan was a new time dad and she knew that. She told me one week, make sure Ryan's here. And it wasn't her job to do this, but she bought a baby bath and a doll and was teaching him things what to do. Wow. It's one of the best services I've ever had. They is that is that available like across the UK then? I, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I think it is. I know it's definitely Essex because that's where I am. Mm. Um, I'm, I, I don't know much else. But right. um, it was one of the best charities I've had. And they can suggest awesome. all parents' classes. They run parents' classes. They can tell you where to go. They give you all leaflets, all information. And they will go to all your appointments with you if you don't have anyone. It is the most amazing service and it helped me so much. Just have someone come round and have a cup of tea and I can yeah. moan about Ryan. Do you know what I mean? It was lovely. Yeah. But well, that's, um, oh, that's just yeah. what I need as well. Yeah. What we'll do is um, I'll add uh, that parents first into my Instagram stories later and any other charities I can find that help as well. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, just 
make sure you believe in yourself and always talk no matter what's going on um in the mums club discord as well my links in the bio um where there's mums in there who are just talking through because they haven't got anyone else to talk to as well and it's a, a yeah. complete non-judgment zone like you could put a picture of your kids eating whatever on a place yeah. Everybody is saying that's disgusting. Like last night, we were all posting our most ugliest selfies. So you know, it's stuff like that. Just being like normal and not like yeah. bitchy or anything. So yeah, that's uh, that group's in my links in my bio as well. So if anyone hasn't got anyone to talk to, there's loads of mums there that you can talk to. And this question, which is, how do you change your thought process on something bad happening to your child? So like that anxiety thing we were talking about. Like I know Joe, yours is later in the night. But, like, Kelly, how do you, like, Such a hard question. question. Well, I'll, I let think you, that... I'll let you answer this. I've drunk too much alcohol. I need a wee. I'll be back. For me, it was, like, do you remember, Reese, when I was feeling that feeling of, like, people feeling like they're going to throw acid on George? Yeah. Like, way back in the newborn stage. I feel like it's not something that you mentally do to yourself. Like you don't just flip a switch no. and then it's, it's gone now and you're okay now. I'm terrible with it. I feel like you, you almost, I don't want to say you grow out of it, but as they get older, things change. Like the way that you, you, you know, you know your child, like when they're a newborn, they're nothing. They're this little lump. They can't do anything for themselves. And you are it. You're yeah. it for them. Like and then when they get to the to toddlers, exactly. When they, when you, when they get to the toddler stage, they're, they're, they're mobile. They get to move around. They get to do what they want and that sort of thing. And it changes slightly. Um, but it is, it's really hard to, to compartmentalize like that's not gonna happen let's move on or whatever and try and just distract yourself from things like if you feel really overwhelmed maybe there's too many people in this area right now maybe you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by how many people try and find a space where it's like oh my god there's no yeah. one there go over there have a breather take the pram over there just have a little second to yourself and then that's that's what I used to do anyway. Do you know what I found? Because like a lot of my, my postnatal was like intrusive thoughts all the time as well, and I'd be thinking the worst. Like I was always thinking like Rue was gonna get R worded. That was my main thing. I was petrified that was gonna happen to her. I didn't trust her with anyone apart from me because I was like I'm the only person that won't do that to her. Everyone else will. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that was a lot with having a little girl compared to having a little boy. Do you know what I mean? I don't know right. what it is, but I felt like she was more vulnerable. And I found that, like, I was on Facebook and things at the time. And what I found was, like, scrolling through Facebook, it's always bad news. And it's yeah. always, always, always bad news. And there's always them mm -hmm. um, stories. St like, there's I, the Wales Online on Twitter, right? Like, five-year-old boy in Virgin's found dead. You know, brother and mother and father being arrested. There's never good news on the news. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that being on facebook and that being like my main social media was getting me down because you'd be lying there in the night like half a seat in between feeds reading yeah, it yeah. and it would be like you know pedo year you know this yeah. happened to baby year this has happened to a child and it was literally i was yeah. like all i was thinking then that this is happening all around me constantly yeah. it's going to happen to my child because it's everywhere yeah. but it's not yeah. everywhere it's just no. the news will only print the bad news and not the good news yeah. Yeah, so my yeah. Is, and I say this to everyone is get off fucking Facebook. Oh, so, so that so what's your funniest mum fails and end it on a good one? Go on then, Kelly. I fake tanned this area. Yeah, breastfed. Yeah, nice. This beard. area was just covered in tan. Covered in tan. I, I felt awful. Cute. I you know what? I did it. Not, I tanned. I did it not long ago, and I I faked hand, and he was kicking off. So I got him into the, <laughs> I got him into bed with us. Kick Reese out. He was down on the sofa, and then I had George in bed with me. And I woke up in the morning. I had nursery the next day, and he literally had a full fake tan on his hands, and it was like a little imprint of his hand was like on my body. <laughs> I was like woke up oh. in the morning thinking, oh shit. Cold nursery, and they were like, "Oh my god, what the hell?" I think oh. mine is a bit of a cliche one, and it literally only happened three days ago. And I don't like—I talk about everything openly on this app anyway, so fuck it. But like, 
in the mornings, sometimes the kids wake up before me. So Hunter will wake up, he'll wake Logan up. They're in the same room together. So Logan will always come into me and be like, Mom, we're awake. And I'm like, and like covers, like, oh my God. Okay, just give me a minute. So Logan gets Hunter out of the cot. And they both come into me and they have cuddles and it's lovely. Do you know what I mean? But like Logan was watching telly. I'm sitting there, Hunter's standing next to me in the bed. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to open my eyes. Okay, okay, I'm waking up. And I just heard something vibrate. And I looked and it's been down my drawers. Hey. <laughs> and I just opened my eyes. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Literally, like, four days ago. I was like, no, my God. And now, the thing is, though, now he knows it's there. I need to move stuff, man. But I was just like, oh, my God. And that is literally, my, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hiding under the covers, trying to open my eyes. And then I'm suddenly like, oh, no. And all that is. Yeah. I can't think. You don't do anyone puts me on the spot. I can't think of anything. What's the funniest thing? Yeah. That's how I was real guess. No fucking idea, mate. None at all. They've fallen off loads of stuff. Oh, yeah, when Gaff was small, they put him in the high chair. And um, I don't know how bad this is, but he, he was my first born in it. And you know when you went, you go to the pubs and they got them wooden high chairs. Yeah. And yeah. I know this now because I've got two children. But I'm from this experience. But I was like, oh, there's just no straps on this one. And he must have been like seven or eight, seven months oldish. He was kind of sitting up on his own. So I put him in there, but there's no leg bit in between it is there to like keep the legs no, in because the straps hang from underneath, which I didn't know. But I was in the middle of eating food, and next thing I know, I looked over and I was like, "Where's Gavin?" And all I could do was like, "Yeah!" And his little head was stuck there, and he was dangling <laughs> from the high chair, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I'm the worst parent in the world." I was like, seriously, I I never, I was just shamed then, and then I I took him. I took him to A and E that evening for something else because it was some, he had a rash or something, and they were like, "Has he banged his head at all?" And I had to tell the A and E doctor that story, and I was like, oh, "But he's fine, no, you know, he didn't. He well, he could have concussion." I was like, "No, he's just dangling by his neck, mate." <laughs> I was like, this is, don't uh... tell the health visitor for fuck's sake. I know. <laughs> Please don't for social. But oh. like, with the straps yeah. and everything, I had one of those like lightweight buggies. You know the ones that lie down. Well, I think it was Logan. I can't this back. I can't remember if it was Logan or Hunter. I think it was Logan. And he, I'd laid the buggy down flat and it had yeah. the hood on it. But I'd laid him down flat and I was like, I'm not going to strap him in because he's asleep. I don't want to wake him up to move his arms. So it was just laying down flat. I've tilted it to get it up a curb. And because he's laying down, he's just slid out the back of the buggy. <laughs> I almost fucking stepped on him. <laughs> Because <laughs> he weren't strapped in or anything, he just slid out as soon as I tilted it up the car. Oh, do you know with buggies, oh, all right? God. Do you know when you go shopping? Have you ever played like it's like buggy buckaroo, in it? Where you're putting them, <laughs> putting the shopping on the back of the bag, and you get to that and point, they on, they're already not tipping because you're pushing them, and then you'll forget about it. And you'll do <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> baby on the floor. <laughs> Oh, you have a go at them because they got out on the buggy oh, Buggy fell. buckaroo. <laughs> Why are you getting out the other shop is off your head? I love that. Buggy buckaroo. Wow. Well, oh, <laughs> this love was that. absolutely a good night, I think, as everybody's enjoyed. Yeah. Oh, so fun. Would you like to see this again? Um, would you like this to be a weekly thing? <laughs> <laughs> you can say no, George. Yeah. Yeah. We'll understand. <laughs> yeah, you've just had enough of us now. I know. Do you know my face is hurting from smiling, though. Oh, dear. my face is so red. I think like I overshared. Oh, I'm yes, it is. so red now. <laughs> and if there's any other mum creators that you would like to see being a guest, um, yeah, we worked out. We yeah. can only have two guests. <laughs> we need to, we need to start all. drawing straws <laughs> every week. I'll just be like, right, the ladies want to discuss this topic. Are you in or are you out? Yes. <laughs> oh, we will try and do it. So I will try and do it for next Wednesday. But then yeah, I'm going to is when the kids are at my mum's. So I'm completely free. I'm fine cool. for Wednesday. So I'll try. I'm going to. 
be going away for two weeks so I'm not going to be able to do a live like this because I'm going to be on my like honeymoon <laughs> so um I will maybe put one of you two as like a sit-in host or something Kelly's got more followers than me she can have the accountability Okay. Well, I'll happily sit back. Yeah, we could do a, a gentle parent. So much Instagram. pressure. It's so, <laughs> it's so much pressure. So much pressure. Yeah, I definitely take a step back for this now. I'm like, oh, I'm like, the the same yeah. I tell you what, though, I tell you who I do have is Laura Delaney. Somebody's just mentioned her now. Have you seen her? Yes, Laura. We're friends on TikTok and she's amazing. I'd love no to have her. Else. Not your basic mama, but I don't know her real name. Oh, and she always, she always makes the kids lunches and she's like, I fucking just put fucking this in there and fucking that. She's funny, like. She's oh, like, there's so many. We'll have to do it. We'll have to do it, definitely. Yes, we've got uh, we've got quite a few like normal mums on here now, haven't we? Yeah. We, we gravitate towards Unity. them, don't we? Mm. Yeah. Well, it's been lovely. It I has been it. absolutely amazing. It really has. Lovely. Right, well... Shall I see you all next week. Yeah, I will thank see you for you having next us. Week. Thanks thank for joining. <laughs> I'm gonna try and figure out another talk. Do you know what? I'll try and find a lockdown mum. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'll chat about lockdown mums and like what this. it's actually like. Yeah. 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 They found like what what in terms of like because sometimes like where the government hasn't supported, there may be some charities that have stepped up. And like let's yeah. try and get words out for other mums that might need those resources. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Sad. Well. Right. Ciao for now. I'll see you see next you week. Later. Thanks very much. Bye, girls. Bye. 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 Bye.